because of it. Complexity still looking for their chessy hero. Uh, most likely chessy hero. I don't imagine they're going to shuffle things up that much. Drought Ranger does in fact end up in the bottom lane up against the Underlord, which is uh, you know probably going to be a fine lane for the Drow, regardless of whether or not she lands up against the Underlord or the Faceless Void. Should be about similarly decent for her. This is slightly worse because PPD has to deal with this. He's just getting his ass whooped by the Underlord with plus 20 damage. And he has uh, plus three, so wow. Yeah, good luck competing with that number. But he's going to be like hitting Moo all day. It's only going to work for so long until Z Freak comes in, lifts up the lion, and now PPD is going to, well, hit them both on average. Unfortunately, that's not how this game works. Kind of playing support, but also looks like a core at this point, 33. Uh, he's messing with the with Faces Void quite a bit. Radiant Courier, ooh, Zai jumps in and snipes him, taunts, and then teleports out. Dude, that is some serious BM. They are going to leave 33 alone on this top lane. Gets dilated. I'm walking Chessie a little bit off, though. Can't go in for a couple more right clicks. But at this point, Faces Void up against the Sand Kings in a really tough spot. So is this Rubik, however, on the bottom lane. Couple Treants going in front of Z Freak. The body blocks from Zai are good enough to get this kill. Moo can't really do enough, and now he's kind of getting blocked as well. The Wall of Trees, another spike from PPD, and the right clicks persistent from PyCat. We'll get them two kills. That Zy rotation, though, in the early game damage in order to compete with uh, with Optics Draft. So this early lane setup or rotation or whatever you want to call it for Optic, really, really smart. I love how this uh, how they managed this and how this ended up for them. Flexity don't really have any other options. Like if they put the Faces Void on this bottom lane instead of top lane. Well, first of all, they won't be able to make that trade. Zai now going to pick a fight with Chessie. My apologies, guys. The, uh, yeah, getting in there on that Sand King. Really big kill for him. Now going to wrap around onto Pycat. Lift him up, keep him in the Firestorm. And Moo's damage output right now is immense. But with the Gust, they will force Moo into a corner. TP does have two Tangos and a Quelling Blade. I think you can just go up here and just start booking it. 33 has a Burrow Strike. Will land it. Tower's still shooting. Chain Stun is there from PPD and Moo. Will eventually fall here. Puts a lot of damage to 33 before he goes down, but his death was assured. I'm not going to do it again, but just slowly but surely pushing that level 6 mark, of course, makes Zai a huge threat. And of course, we have this mid lane as well, which I have not mentioned a single goddamn time because it's a boring lane, honestly, until this happens, until rotations come in. Get the cold peak, get the chilling touch, drop the CCNC on the low ground, and then he might just be dead. And he is dead. Help from PPD, lands a spike on at the very least boots. Probably at the very most, uh, well, you do have a lot of options as far as builds are concerned with Jar Ranger, but a Shadow Blade at some point, a Mask of Madness maybe. Zai is gonna get away from this one. They're focusing onto Pycat instead, lands a gust onto Moo, but. Complexity, no. Shut down Pycat and then Stim, I think, if he tries. Here's the lift, here's the deny. Oh my god, you god! Woo! Does get with the Furrow Strike after the spike and, you know, probably will go down, but that is worth, man. That is worth, if nothing else. It's uh, still a problem that Complexity have to persistently go after. They're going to do just that. Limp and Chessy will instead go for PPD, who they ran into. Foil onto two. Limp has decided that's not a good fight. He will dodge the Gust. But he does get hit with the spike afterwards. Chessie's gonna dive right in, but he's short of the Chronosphere levels. Trying to go for PPD. Time walk forward. He may get this lion, but now he's completely and utterly surrounded. Does have the Chronosphere, which he can drop and maybe escape with. And it looks like he'll do just that. TP Chronosphere does get him out of there, but <laughs> you get the Drow Ranger. Uh, they may not know if they actually want the Sand King, like that's what they really want, but they'll go for the uh, Nature Prophet instead. He is super dead. That's actually a three kill spree. Snipes the courier again. He gets one more shot. No, it misses. And now Zai needs some backup. 33 is here. Epicenter, Burrow Strike available, waiting for it. Zai is just dead though. And now he's gonna Epicenter for poor Kitrak. I don't know if he deserved that one, man. He's gonna get the kill. Takes an Ice Blast to the face though. That's the hood holding strong. In the meantime, they jump after Moo as well. He's so tanky. He tries to get the Dark Rift off, but it's not in time. Finger of Death cuts him down as now it's going to be the Viper in a compromised spot, way too far behind enemy lines. And King does have a Burrow Strike to get out of here, but of course Rubik still has his. Burrow Strike from the low ground, ooh, they cross paths. But it looks like it won't matter because 33 is still in a compromised enough position to get this kill. He has no mana, he's being chased down by everyone and their mom, tries to get into the Roche Pit, not gonna happen. It's gonna be Complexity, wrong pages for the Viper. He's one and two, hasn't really had the best of times, but... 
That's looking to bulk up right now as they do wrap around once again behind the tower. Limp gets a phase shift off, silences the Sand King, and is free and clear to chase after PPD. Meantime, Moo kind of being dove, but off to the top side is where the Ice Blast can land with the nice Grow Spike from Z-Freak. And now here comes the Chronosphere. That's going to be an easy two kill. They drop a coil onto 33, praying for the bash. Not going to happen. Grow Strike Epicenter does quite a bit of damage, but won't get the kill on any of these heroes. As now he's silenced and swarms. He's dead as well. Z-Freak grabs a double. And that is why Z Freak is very often touted as one of the best players on Complex. And Shadow Blade is a pretty garbage can item if you're looking to tower dive with it. Because uh, the element of surprise isn't really there. Although catching off random Rubik's uh, makes Shadow Blade a good item. So there you go. Easy value there from Pycat. That's Drow Ranger. Oh, PPD almost tanked the smoke gank. Will take the smoke gank actually, as he's gonna get the Rubik stunned up, but loses his life immediately for it. They've also caught the Sand King here. Now he does have a hood, which he has yet to pop. The Burrow Strike as well, which will dodge the Ice Blast. Deep in the trees, Time Walk, Blind Chronosphere, no. He actually used Massive Madness, hoping for a second shot with the Bash. And they do get PPD, but that's completely okay for Optic. Losing a Lion there is whatever. In exchange for Moo, that could be really good, because now he's tagged with the Ice Arrows. He's incredibly bulky, but you know, he's only so bulky. Up against the three heroes hitting with, plus it's surprising just how much it is. I don't know if everyone else is the same way. Three? He found Kit Track in the middle of nowhere. Keep on top of that ancient apparition. Z Freak is here to give him a little bit of assistance, but Zai is gonna just make sure that this is a free kill. And it indeed is. Easy on kickback. So, Optic, though, they are playing a slow game for right now. The longer this progresses, the worse it'll get, especially if this happens. Pycat is gonna get jacked up trying to steal a couple of Ancients. Will lose his life, give over Gust. Which is, I mean, I guess, here to give them a little bit of backup. PPD peels off to the left. Probably looking to sacrifice himself for his teammates, unless he doesn't have to. Okay, no, he has to. Bikes? No, can't even get it off. That's waiting rip. That's right, so what, so what you gotta do is you gotta try to freaking kill the Chronosphere. If you sit back and just let him farm, this happens, and then you're in a really bad spot. Ice Blast, that's a little bit off, I think. Lots of damage still on the Viper, enough to get the kill, in fact, and now the face is Void, with the Minus Armor on him, is gonna get torn to shreds by Pycat, who's also found Hit Track with a little bit of damage low, but now here comes 33 in from behind. Limp and Z Freak, taking a lot of damage at Musa in here as well. With the Crimson Guard, suddenly everyone's seemingly invulnerable. 33 tele will wrap around, find... Oh, the Face of Void's gonna see him, though. And that was not a smoke or anything like that. That was just a walk-in play. They will go in onto the Puck. Ice Blast cover, giving him a little bit, but for sure not enough. Limp's gonna get sniped. At the minute on the sidelines, Optic have found a little bit of a timing here. That's new here. Of course, an Ice Blast. We'll see a hero on top of it. We'll see two, in fact. We'll see a very vulnerable one. Gets hit with the coil. And I think that was also a first hit bash. He really tries to get into position. I'm not really sure if they're going to be there in time. They are cutting him off with the face's void. Dropping the coil now. Ice Blast is a little bit off the mark yet again. But Sand King is still really deep in. Chronosphere is going to cancel that Sandstorm. Gives them the true sight they need. You do get revealed if you're into a lion or something like that. Yeah, you can bet you're going to kill him. PPD's invis room is just spotted there, by the way. And he's still spotted, actually. Ice Blast again off the mark. But it doesn't matter because it's a lion, and he's like the easiest hero to kill in the game. Uh, Rubik's not that easy to kill. Now the pit comes down onto this Drow Ranger. She does have a double life. She may lose it very, very soon, though. Optic already without their Drow, which means CCNC suddenly has no damage at all. A couple more seconds, up a little bit more, but moves right on top of Pycat. So really struggling to use that aura as the coil comes in from the side. Chessy gunning straight toward the Nature's Prophet. No true sight. Decides instead to go for Pycat. They'll get them both in the end, though. And D Freak gonna charge on forward and CC and see a little bit of slow from that man and Drain with Chessy. Could have another time walk soon. It's gonna be, well, with the Yule Scepter, easily a kill on this Viper, who already used the BKB but did all of no damage in that last fight. And complexity with no chronosphere, absolutely Rothel Stomplane was pushing with woo, two siege creeps. This is not a slow push either from Complexity. This phase's void is absolutely dishing. How much? Oh my god, he has 265 damage. Off on the side, Epicenter doing quite a bit of damage here, but now the Sand King lifted up. Hood not going to do anything for him. Will go down. Does distract a couple of seconds away, but that's 50 seconds where the Sand King is offline. Viper's not up for another 30. And top lane, both catapults are still alive. So Complexity, since they do have a Chronosphere, they can stick around here. Kitrax not too healthy. Z Freak's not too healthy, but... They are funneling some restoration into Limp, so they are looking 
for two sets here. This Underlord with 150 damage is hitting like an absolute truck. And he's tanking like an absolute tank. They are going to try to get that puck, but yeah, good luck doing that. It's going to come in, assassinate PPD. He's down for a minute now. And Optic are on the verge of losing two racks just like that. Moo is untouchable right now. He just Heaven's Halberds on the... Uh, oh, they're going to cancel the Dark Rift. Get debated into the Chronosphere, into two kills. All right. Well, that's... A, oh, BKB also used from CCNC there out of panic. That's GG. Okay. I got to be honest. I did not expect that ending to happen so quickly. But I'll tell you what, guys. I'll tell you what. That is kind of what happens when, as a Drought Ranger draft, for one reason or another, you are unable to push those... destroy them and of course if complexity just get a little bit ahead in the lanes with the luna that's very feasible they can just roll another bramble maze available if he wants to but he's just sitting here being very persistent chipping at moo three tangos left purifies a creep but man just like that all his purification health is gone standing lanes look like they're uh, not too bad for the radiant here Moo's having a lot of problems on top lane, and Zai's gonna go ahead and dive and get the kill! I can take okay, Shadow Realm and Bramble Maze, definitely a real combo there. PPD on the bottom lane is gonna die shortly after, but that's a solo kill for this Dark Willow. I don't think PyCat was even close enough to get experience for that. No, that was just all Dark Willow, so Dark Willow gets a solo kill, gets cashed in, and getting extra experience on Dark Willow support is so incredible. And of course, that's first blood right before the limp. He's absolutely dumpstering him. Like, this isn't even close. The damage at this point, the differential between these two heroes is kind of small. And that's perfect for the sniper because uh, he's got a much, much better attack animation. And he's going to straight kill limp while I'm watching them uh, right at the same time. So he will have that Rimakila mana regeneration. He usually can just check out a couple of assassinations just for harassment since he has so much mana. Ooh. Zai's just messing with Moo so much. This is like, universally going well for Optic. Maybe not on this bottom lane. Burrow Strike does get the kill on Chessy. 33 will get picked off by the tower. And PPD's gonna be chased down by Z Free. One more hit should do it. Oh, nope, nope, nope. Two more hits. And Limp dies elsewhere. PPD's dead, and I chose the wrong engagement. Looks mission. Does get the Luna more experience. Which is great for her, obviously. But at the same time, with the ET rotating up towards top lane, which I believe Optic saw means that they could do this. Just rotate a whole bunch of heroes onto the bottom lane. Limp with the haste rune, though, is going to try to set up onto 33. Burrow strike out, fade bolt, right clicks, with the siphon still sticking. They got him, just barely, though. Curse crown goes on to Chessie. Taking a lot of damage here as well. Will get stunned. PPD and Zai should be able to finish off this Luna, but Zai's taking a lot of damage here. Here comes the sniper. With the shrapnel and level one laid down, they'll take down Chessie. Kit track going to try to TP out assassinate point blank. Not quite in time. He's so close. You really have to aim that closely, man. Come on, just go shoot him. Will be high cow towards top lane stomp. We'll get Moo some space here, but he has no offensive power versus the troll warlord. So they need an additional hero here. Blind goes off, so even Z Free with his plus 39 can't do anything versus Pie Cat. Even if he wasn't blinded, like we don't do much damage versus this troll warlord anyway. See, being here is going to give them the nuke that they need to maybe make some sort of play here. Purification is there, but 33 comes in. Forces them all to disperse. Lands a burrow strike on Z Free, gets the kill, and Pie Cat will get beamed down. The least complexity to get that with the repel. Moo's gonna get Chessy out to safety. These are forced rotations that are just so disastrous. And even then, they do get the kill for Limp on this bottom lane onto 3-3 earlier, but CCNC is not being touched right now. They will drop an epicenter, it looked like, onto Chessy. Cask still bouncing, actually. Now with the Maledict, Chessy is dead. And Z Freak versus 33 now will commence, but uh, they will both dissolve that fight. Luna gonna get picked off for the third time. I don't actually know. They have to smoke on him from behind. They have bigger problems with that right now. The sniper is having an absolute free roll. In fact, he's just gonna kill Limp again. Uh, yeah, Limp is, is he dead. Well, CCNC is gonna point blank assassinate him. So yeah, he's dead. And now Shadow Realm on the move. Zai's in a compromised spot right now, so it looks like he will go down. No more tools here. Gonna try to race for Moo. Not, uh, not bad. He tried. All these kills, though, they seem like consolation kills for complexity. Like, you lost your Luna. At least you got the Witch Doctor. You lost your Death Prophet. Here's the now 800 gold in the bank. PCNC, is he, is he at his lance? He's very close to his lance. 
Vulnerable spot, however, the telekinesis into the siphon. Represents a big possible kill. He's gonna immediately try to TP out, but the stomp will cancel and get them the kill. Limp is gonna grab it. Such a pincer here. Beam, not quite in range. Do they wanna go up the high ground? They're gonna split a little bit, and they will still get the telekinesis. Now with the eclipse, okay. Uh, I'm not really sure if PPT deserve Troll Warlord is absolutely rolling. Even though the sniper just died, he is very close to that lance. Exorcism and Eclipse both now offline, which means Chessie is completely vulnerable. His Cursed Crown is giving me that pie cat is all the time in the world to lay into him. Stomp will give Chessie a little bit of space and hit onto the Dark Willow. And oh my god, that right click. Plus 175. Oh my god. Z Freak, you beast. Please. Oh, this is gonna punch him so hard as. Okay. Oh, well, he's just dead. Chessie got it. The beam. That was kind of anticlimactic. That was another great rotation for Complexity. Those type of kills get enough of them, they will start to add up. So in the meantime, Repel TP. Assassinate right in the face. Does cancel. And now 33, Burst Strikes before the Purification can even land. The Thanks is called. That Soul Ring, uh, I think, put him into Lethal Threshold. And now Kit Track. He's gonna be in a maze of brambles. That's not a good spot for a Rubik, although Chessie is here to maybe help out. The Dark Willow is untargetable, and he has another beam, but beam will not kill off the Troll Warlord, not even close to things. Uh, top lane's kind of dying. He's, he doesn't even have his Dragon Lance yet, but it doesn't matter because there's no one up here. They will find the Dark Willow, and they will kill her off. Congratulations, four heroes. Maybe that'll make something happen for them, but, but anything less than that, I don't really... with the Sand King can be absolutely backbreaking. They will find their target. CCNC is spotted. And it looks like this dwarf man is dead. With the Eclipse, he is super dead. It's expensive for complexity because of this. King as well. You get the kill and they do escape without any casualties. And as I say that, PPD <laughs> finds Kitrak. Assassination, or Trapnel rather, goes off. Terrorized and a Burrow Strike to cancel that TP. He's not going anywhere. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Smoked in Complexity's vision. But maybe they'll have to settle for Kitrak. Yeah, they will. Uh, they do have a repel and a purification. Maybe Kitrak survives. Here comes a rotation in from Liv. Does get the silence of the Dark Willow. And they will separate the supports from everyone else. Can they get anyone here? Zai puts up the Bramble Maze. Such a huge AoE disable and is going to go into that Shadow Realm, Liv taking a full epicenter, he's gonna go down, Moon's unable to do anything to help him, nor is Z-Freak. First Blitter comes out, they're trying desperately to go for 33, and they will take him down, but at the cost of their death profit, that is not an exchange complexity to be happy with. Especially since, again, PyCat Pi is elsewhere, doing pushing things, killing off Lunas? No, just, just pushing towers. When else from Optic, they are surrounded, but... Imp is going to be the first one spotted, moves right next to him, burst right available, 33 is going to land onto two, Terrorize coming in as well, and it's Omnite needs to get something out, but no, can't get a single spell cast, Limp with his ghosts are out, it's not going to do enough, Luna's in the middle of the fight, drops his Eclipse on the Pie Cat, does take down the Aegis, and will also take down Zai, but that's his BKBU used, and his Eclipse as well. 33 does take down a couple in the background. Now the chase is on after Piecat. CCNC here as well as 33 gonna wind up that epicenter with a burrow strike available onto two. Piecat gonna tear through the rest of them. Triple kill with 33. And that's swinging really, really hard. Sniper doesn't even have the maelstrom completed yet. Went for the pike first. And is this gonna be two racks? Uh, I think it might be. It might be just a morale victory here for Optic because I don't know if Complexity can actually win a fight. They just don't have enough punching power in this game. The Luna dropped a perfect clip in the actual perfect position. I don't think there was a single creep that hit, got hit with the beam. Doesn't matter. Still 16 seconds in with the Burrow Strike, opening 33 and the Terrorize afterwards. Now here comes the Desperation play for Complexity. They're gonna jump in, find the Troll Warlord. Eclipse is there, Terrorize a little bit too late. And they took down Pycat. Limp's gonna push forward, looking for CCNC. Yule Scepter, there is, he doesn't have a Yule Scepter. It's hard to use, it's something you don't have. Uh, looking forward for a little bit more Bedlam on the high ground. Doing a little bit of damage. They're looking for 33 instead. Gets a BKB off and he will go ham. It's a 10 second one still. 
They're going before the Troll Warlord. This is so aggressive from Optic. And it looks like that aggression is going to be rewarded. Z Freak in the middle of nowhere did not see that one coming. Looking now for the Luna. Is a BKB. She'll be forced to pop it right away. The 9 well. And Optic took about no damage from that. BPD with the heal. Has the vessel as well. Burrow Strike onto the Omni Knight. Putting him in place. Purification. Repel. He barely gets out of there. PPD actually getting siphoned as Lynn catches siphons on everyone. They kill off Zai and PPD. Oh, and also put the sniper to sleep. This is going to be a big pick off on CCNC. One more Glade gets the kill. Everlander comes in and it will kill off the Luna. Is that going to be good enough to get something for Optic here as the Troll Warlord is coming in hot? But he is kind of all alone here. Gets thrown back. He has a BKB still available. Wants Kit Track first. And it looks like he's right on top of him. Purification can keep Kit Track alive for a little while longer. Pycat will still get the kill with the range form. Z-Freak and Limp now have to run away from the big bad troll. Death Prophet does not have any siphon targets available. Oh, gets misses though. Still not good enough. 33 returns. And with Pycat joining the fight for real, ends up salvaging that one for Optic. That looks so good, man. Killing off those two supports and catching the sniper like that. Still, sniper is not the threat. It's the troll warlord that's the big threat. Well, this top lane is alive. I'm not sure if that's something that they should be really happy about. It looks like it's gonna be alive for much longer. Moo cannot even get close. If he tries, like, there is a birth check with his name on it. Yeah. There's waiting for Moo to step out. Waiting for anyone to step out. There's double blink daggers here. Surprise! You're dead! Dude, he, I don't know what you replace, but. He's just gonna go for it. Ob sentries. Oh, the D Ward race. And now Pygat's gonna jump straight in towards Moo. He's going by himself, but he does have that BKB and the Aegis. He's gonna use the BKB rather early, trying to go for this Omni Knight. But failed to do so, so BKB now down for Pycat. The aggressive play as Chessie is gonna oh dodge the burrow strike and epicenter with her own BKB. This Luna's chasing forward, but can't get anything. Limp's gonna blink forward now. On to 33, but with the quick Yule Scepter, Limp can no longer give chase. They will find Zai in the middle of nowhere. Terrorizes his feet, blinks out of there, and is still alive. Drops out of Bramble Maze. Can they not even kill Zai? Oh, please tell me they can actually kill someone. They do still terrorize. Drop it on the back line. GA does finally get used, but Death Prophet is still losing her life right now as Chessie is doing no damage to anyone in the middle. It's the sniper in the back, just right clicking everyone. Now PBD joining the fray with the full channel Death Ward. He's glimmered, and there's no true sight here. Here comes Pycat back in with the Whirling Axes, finishing the game. GG. And ultimately, Optic, do they even use the. Okay, they lose Zai. They lose one hero. They don't use the Aegis. They don't use the Cheese. They simply don't need to. Once you get that far ahead. Uh, leash on the Phantom Lancer, drain out his damage. His illusions will do quite a bit, but everything else is not going to be that big of a deal. Optic now, go for it. Disgusting amount of damage, and this is going to let Pycat push all the way up the wave. The Alms are still coming in. Rolls a little bit off the mark here from Chessie, but there's one bolt toss, there's two, there's three, and he's already dead just to that. I don't know, man. Like, it gets really underwhelming when you're like 30 minutes in the game and you try to do that combo, because it usually just doesn't do enough damage, but at two minutes in the game... It just absolutely destroys. That's 300 damage worth of nuke. He could have even gotten a little bit more. They kill off Chessie in the blink of an eye, and now they're going to dive for it more. Look, two more boulders, and another boulder from Zai. Even the Art of Spirit getting in onto the action. Rolling towards Chessie. They flatten the Monkey King. And now PPD, he's picked up a Harpy as well, who has even more spam. This is why you ban out Chen. Is have to leave this lane to its own devices. 33 is going to just be obliterating the creep wave just like that. Over in the mid lane, CCNC is drawing perfectly even with Limp. Again, this base range of the Lina is going to keep her very safe against the Razor shenanigans. And we have Chessie once again being aggroed upon. Does have Jingu. Will do about nothing for him. He's trying to juke, but I mean, he's a monkey in the forest. You would think he'd be able to juke better than that. But baby monkey, who's going to need to watch his parents to learn. Please, David Attenborough, save this Monkey King. Lena needs a little bit of saving as well. Else I catch onto Dark Willow, but that will be enough to kill her off. Easy, easy. Kuna's got some lightning. Zai's in a little bit of trouble here. We'll teleport out. It looks like he will be just fine. A lot of damage on him, though. Up towards top lane, Chessie is maybe a little bit less than fine. Here's the Penitent slow. Pycat is right on his tail. And that stun does not last long enough, and he's just dead to the Lances before the Centaur can even get into position. 
PPD has completely and utterly demolished this top lane. That's just Chen for you, man. That's just what Chen does. Unfortunately, he doesn't really have the gold to really, like, back that up, which sucks. I mean, he, he just... He should have more net worth than this, considering how much he did for that lane. All the gold, though, is going to Pinecat. Like, he's as happy as a Phantom Lancer could possibly be right now. And also the Sand King. This Caustic working for him on this bottom lane, as long as this lane is still just going to be him versus Moo. Like, he's completely okay with that. CCMC has a Lacuna play with Lim's name on it. Zai is going to be in tower range here, with the minus armor should be going down in trade. But I believe the kids call that hashtag worth. Tower on top lane is being pushed with the catapult. Pycat grabbed the last hit. He has full rush build, why the hell not? There are other lanes, but this is just not the build. This is definitely the situation where you want to max out that passive greed. Now they caught and move. First crown goes off on the 33, does have a level 4 bro strike. Chain stun is good. With the net afterwards, they also have limp coming in. Great dragon slay from CCNC, but 33 was already very dead there. The Chessy, he is going to jump on top of Pycat and missed the Boundless Strike, and now Pycatch is going to lay into him with this massive agility boost. You don't want to die solo to a Phantom Lancer, but I'm not really sure if it's possible for Chessie to escape this. Moo's going to come in, blow up all the illusions, Pycatch still grabs the kill, and has some Chen Creeps here. He's going to dash out and then get sent back home. PPD going to send himself back home as well. Got literal bottom of the net worth chart. Has he hit a creep? He's killed 11 creeps, but he's 0-5-0. Zero, CCNC, man, he is just pushing the aggro dial all the way to maximum on this mid lane. The thing is with Razor is that he needs a lot of help to get on top of this Lina, who at this point has phase boots, so I don't think Razor can actually really ever pressure that Lina as, uh, as Chen has arrived. Where are his goons? They're lagging a little bit, but oh, you got the net, you got the clap. Net not the greatest versus the Dark Willow, but for sure the clap is going to destroy her. Of course, the three does have that Burrow Strike as well as an epicenter at the ready. Three is going to go right into the PPD. And they will try to lock down third team out of this fight. Now she's gonna charge the epicenter off to the poor level four Dark Willow. What did she ever do to you, level eight Sand King? That's just me. Zion, the meantime, being picked off. Looks like he was trying to dive the. Wow, well, I don't know what happened there in that mid lane. I have no freaking clue. Zion's a success here. Then back to the base. One more back to the road. Oh, uh, he actually is going to get some residual family gem with staked here, and now he's gonna regret that. I don't know he could do that. I, I, okay. He was definitely being sent back instead of dying. Like, I don't know, but it seems like that, that was probably preferable to death. Roll in. Oh, man. Give Chessie a freaking break, man. He kicks him into Pycat's range. The Phantom Run can proc. And now Chessie's just boned. He's gonna try to juke into a tree and then get up onto a tree. Not gonna happen. Moo does kill off PPD elsewhere along with if you're like a Razor or Beast Master, but you'll drain your mana so that next time. He'll kill you. Throw strike. Still lands through the untargeted ability. And out of the epicenter onto Kit Track. A lot of bedlam damage. Big turn. Kit Track. Still is going to get a little bit of distance here as PPD is going to be focused down in the background. And the Terrorize is up. Forces the Sand King back into the Monkey King. And they'll lose two. At the spike at this point, does have that mana burn tool. Ground is going to roll in towards Boo. A little bit off the mark. Still has the smash. Uh, connected to the Beastmaster. Roar is available for food, plus they have that Bramble Maze. But the Bramble Maze isn't going to do anything up against CCNC. Who, from distance, deploys that Lightning Bolt. Treads the Beastmaster in top lane, still being shoved in by PPD. Um, might be getting jacked. What the hell's going on? Whoa, whoa, whoa. My internet is dying. Uh, uh yeah, something's happening. Oh. Uh, uh, what is happening? Uh, well, the Roar goes off onto the Earth Spear. I'll fix it after this fight. And Zai is going to be forfeit. Phantom Lancer trying to double gang his way up. It's a low cooldown, but Bedlam is going to cut right through him. And let me. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. What is happening right now? Radiance bottom tower is under attack. My internet just like stopped working.
I'll try to test kills. So you can saw I got in the front. Has had the H for a long time, so he's not really a viable target. What are they setting up for? Brand way to the back. Onto three. Wukong's man is well there, but he's gonna let herself be up for a little bit more. As Zai just, uh, high cap is gonna go off the huge front right on the three. And all these illusions is swarming everybody. Oh my god, that looks so good for Complex, but there's still just 10k behind. Pycat took no damage that entire fight. Not really a terribly huge deal. You get the read on the blimp dagger. This wraparound, this could be pretty bad because uh, OG Optic are still kind of separated right now. Although PP is going to get this up on, on him, so the gate is up. They'll once again catch 33. That's the worst case scenario there. They use a lot if they want to see. Beastmaster has a lot of gold. For him, this is not really a super late game draft. If he gets jumped, and all that gold isn't going to mean all that much now, is it? So the siren does come in. Spread is greatest over here. The Chen, the Phantom Legend, do get caught. Here comes the Meteor Hammer with the Doppel King out. He's going to get some safety. PPD making an effort. Does get the Pentagon that, but it looks like he will go down. Move the beat down, getting hit with the full epicenter. Does return back with the Roar and kills 33. As it's Piecat struggling to get into the middle of the fight thanks to that wall of ramps, but he finally finds an angle onto Limp. The Terrorize is going to be dodged by Piecat's Doppel King. And now he just gets to the monkey. He can't quite find him. CC and C is still pretty healthy in the meantime. Curse Crown does land. Z now on the run. Pi Cat is just dashed forward so quickly. Z trying to channel with that meme hammer. Not gonna happen. Pi Cat would have dodged it anyway with that Doppel Gate, it looks like. And it's kind of a necessary evil there for complexity to take what they can get in these engagements. They can't really be too picky. Gotta pick off the viable heroes, but Pi Cat can swoop right and almost has his Agate Receptor as well. And broke down with the resistance on him. And your sins, Roshan. Strike also in the back lens. The limp, the bramble maze is going to keep everyone going in. And now the stomp. Looking for this clump right here as the aim hammer is going to drop with Wukong's command coming in as well as Terrorize. No, but gets Burrow struck up. So they can't get a Terrorize. A pit track to get put into the dumpster. And now Pycat is going to go up against the world, and that's exactly how he liked it. He'll lose the back for the Sand King, but still, it's running around uncontested. He's lifted up as ECNC will throw out an LSA for reasons. Doesn't matter, man. Limp's still dead. Everyone on OG going to be buying four kills down. They only lost two gigantic gold swing, but it all just doesn't matter because they can't get on top of Pike and actually kill them off. This PL is looking unstoppable, and now they are knocking on the front door. Racked mid lane will fall in its entirety, it looks like. Probably top lane as well. And this is a pretty big opening for complexity in the fact that Optic just use all their buyback, so if they're able to somehow make a miracle happen off of having no song on the siren, good luck. Then, you know, probably a lot of time they don't have to worry about any heroes in the map, but uh, Pycat is just unkillable. They're gonna take out the top racks. Out slot bottom. Pycat is gonna match style that crown off of himself. Zai is dying somewhere. I'm not really sure where. It doesn't really matter because it's what's important. Jesse does have the new stash. He's gonna go in there. Roar goes off onto CCNC. Does have the cheese with the hand of God. Google says will dodge the hammer. And he will the cheese off at his leisure. It looks like CCNC will survive for a while longer. He's deploy that Laguna Blade. He's still alive, in fact, and no one's focusing on the Pycat. Gets back to the base. Perfect play from Lena and the Chen. As Pycat now kind of running dry on man has no more doppelgangs or very few. Doppelgangs have probably got to back off for a little while. Off this Phantom Lancer, who's in the front, they're just gonna walk right past him. Emble Maze, here comes the rock onto the Chen. It's gonna be a little bit off, actually. They also fail to instigate the Sand King. They will drop CC, you can see out, but Pycat's in the background going straight onto Lim. He's doing a lot of damage on the main Lancer, though, so it's only the Legion doing damage. Oh, Pycat really wants right now. He kind of just wants to die and get more mana, honestly. Kurt Crown's gonna keep him at bay. They've only taken down the Chen so far. And now Pocket's gonna dash forward for a little bit more damage onto Limp. He's not really hitting her well anything, but uh, Lina is straight onto Z Freak. The right click damage is real with the Laguna Blade, and they will probably be able to kill off this Nog's Iron. Yes, the Burrow Strike, they will be able to do so. Chessie trying desperately to kill off this Lina, but 45 HP. She slips out of the base and out to freedom. Five extra up for complexity, but still they're struggling to kill off Pycat. Terrorize can hit only onto the Sand King. Roars there as well. Trying to focus down to 33, and it looks like he will be going down with Pycat again onto Limp. He's just unstoppable. A kick from distance. Not quite going to land, but the Bramble Maze will keep him in place right now is your focus instead onto Zai. And well, Complexity is starting to lose, uh, Optic rather, starting to lose quite a few heroes, but not Pycat. Still standing strong. Right now, he does still have this Aegis, so he's gonna fight to the death. 
and now he's gonna come back with a lot of resources. And to style split doppelgang out, he's going to just sit there and fight. No, nope, run on to the other side. And Style can get rid of this crown stun, so he should be fine versus that. Now the Bedlam's coming in, doing quite a bit of damage. Another doppelganger available to get rid of that net, and still on the run. Still is gonna try to loop back around, but gets hit with the ensnare and will be finally brought down. It only took them like 20 freaking. I've gotten a little bit of gold off of the end of that fight, and well, a lot of experience. That's impressive. Finds Zai with the roar, and here comes the Bedlam doing a lot of damage to this Earth Spirit. He's down for 50. It's certainly nice. Plus three. Here comes the song in the blink. Clustering of Optic isn't really that great, so they're gonna go for, looks like both of them, but off in the back, oh, they lose the Dark Willow. The Sand King dodges the Meteor Hammer. PPD is able to get all the spells off. He might even survive this. And his Pi Cat of CCNC coming in from the back and just cleaning house. They're still trying to focus down to the Chen. They'll finally bring him down, but this Phantom Lancer, he's right on top of Chessy. He's gonna put the Monkey King in a dumpster and now look for more. CCNC also rather healthy. He's gonna chase forward to the north. His limp is gonna get glimmered out, but it looks like that's gonna fade. They just outright losing the game. Phantom Lancer's picked up the butterfly. He's also right around the corner from having that crit talent. Now Pycat is gonna get leashed up. Flutter is gonna get him very quickly away. But once you get that crit talent, man, then like you have two really big, or I guess three really big damage items on PL. You are going to be freaking unstoppable. Once you're losing, you're gonna start dumping some serious damage in. This is only with Pycat and CC and C. And then a handful of illusions, killing off this range rack. Some unhealable damage for all you guys out there who know what I'm talking about. Off in the back line, we're off onto the Lina. Bedlam coming in as well. Yule Scepter will save her for a couple seconds. But Pycat, he's rooted down, so he's not doing any damage in the meantime. So he seems he does ditch a couple spells before he goes down. And Zai's going to arrive, and Terrorize is going to be there. And wow, what they, what? Phantom Rush away from the Terrorize? I, <laughs> I'm just learning new stuff all day today. Okay, well that works like that apparently. Uh, still they do kill off the Lina. She is going to, to immediately come back because of that Bloodstone. Limp's getting a lot of damage, but he's not stealing it away from the real Lancer. He's stealing it away from Random Illusion. Trying to go for the Lina one more time. Meteor Hammer will not work up against this Yule Scepter. Actually, it will work this time. Oddly enough, CCNC though, into the Shadow Blade, will be fine. And now Z-Freak's gonna get clipped by that LSA. Burrow Strike follow-up is there with the right clicks from the Lina. Z-Freak is astoundingly tanky, but Pycat's in the background, tearing apart the buildings. Doppelganger gonna create another gigantic army that will adopt the Naga Siren as the Epicenter comes in as well. Onto Chessie, who's trying to snipe CCNC for all it's worth. They're going for a limp in the background as well. GG is called. Monkey King's gonna be obliterated by CCNC at the end of the day. And that is going to be that. It's going to be GG for Optic taking the series 2-1 up against complexity.